Activision presents a smashing blast from the past. Developed by Vicarious Visions. It's Crash Bandicoot! Hello, peoples, this is Sonic 73 2, and welcome to 2017's annual spectacular Let's Play Summer thing. I don't know where I was going with that. Either way, though, this time we are not playing one, not two, but three games for this summer, and we'll be playing the Crash Bandicoot Insane tr Insanity Insane. I wait, and I think it's Insanity or uh, uh, something like that. Anyway, the new trilogy just came out, yeah. We're gonna be playing that. So, we're gonna start with the first game and then move on to the second one and then to the third one. So, why did I decide to play Crash Bandicoot out of all things this summer? Well, for one thing, I kind of didn't know what I was going to be doing for the summer for the longest time. I was kind of just, you know, winging it, and when the time came, I would probably come up with something. And then I remember this game was coming out. I remember that for the longest time, I've always, I did want to let's play a Crash Bandicoot game. It's just I didn't know which ones because the PS1 games, I didn't experience with them. Uh, Wrath of Cortex, I'd never beat. Uh, the, 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 uh, what, was, what, was the, what was the game called? Uh, Twin Sanity. I like Twin Sanity. That was, that was a fun game. It's just I, I didn't feel like playing it at the time. And then the Mutant games, I tend to not really acknowledge those things. I mean, they're not bad, but like, you know, I'd rather just play one of the classics. So I remember this game was coming out, and I'm like, you know what? Let me wait for the trilogy to come out because I'm pretty sure that'll give me more incentive to play the games. And lo and behold, I had the incentive to play it. I spot it. I so far love it. So let's start out with the first game where it began, Crash Bandicoot. Uh, starting your game with overwrite the auto save. Yeah, let me just. Yeah, let me disable auto save for this one, just so my previous auto, just so like my first file auto save won't get corrupted, just in case I need that. So yeah, let's start off with the cutscene. It was as soon as thing loads. That's right. Loading times for this game, they're not bad, but they're not good either. I mean, I've seen faster loading times, I see slower loading times, and okay, good. But Doctor Cortex. We haven't determined the cause of past failures. <laughs> Moron! This bandicoot will be my general. And he will lead my Cortex commandos to world domination. This time, I shall reign triumphant. We are closer than ever before. Quickly, into the vortex. <laughs> Dr. Cortex. <laughs> the Vortex is not ready! We have no idea what it could do! <laughs> Failure again! <laughs> Capture him! Uh-oh! <laughs> Prepare the female bandicoot! And just like that, Crash's adventure begins. So now we are in the first stage, Insanity Beach. And I should probably clear up one thing. So for most of you guys know, the original trilogy on the PS1 was developed by Naughty Dog. Yes, that Naughty Dog that also made Jack and Daxter and the Uncharted series. How they went from fun, cute, orange bandicoots to go trigger-happy humanoids with Otzel partners to uh, Indiana Jones knockoff. You got me. So, Crash Bandicoot is a very simple platformer. All you literally gotta do is move left, right, um, forward, backwards, and diagonals. Um, jump with the X button, spin with the square, and that's all you gotta do. Just spin to enemies or jump on them, and that's pretty much all you have to do. So, this game is also from the 90s, so you better be damn sure there are collectibles in this game. So, collectibles range from boxes, which if you break every box in the uh, stage, you do get a gem. Which, I will be going for all gems in this game. It's just, I'll be doing most of the gem hunting off screen. Because gem hunting could be very, very tedious. And, I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys won't really mind watching me collect gems. But, also, also at the same time, just for, you know, consistency's sake. And also because, for the fact, I'm doing three games this summer. Yeah, it's going to take a while. So, maybe box hunting off screen is the best option. And also, these are Akumas. Pretty much think of them as your uh, your health, in a sense. So, if you don't have any Akumas, Crash can only take one hit point, and then he's dead. 
If you have uh, two Aqua Mask, he can take two hit points. If you have three Aqua Mask, Crash becomes invincible, and then he just becomes pretty much a speeding orange thingy. Yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. So also in this game, collecting boxes could be one of the most easiest or could be one of the most hardest things to do, like over here. So, gotta do this. Uh. And that's how you do it. Holy crap. Playing this game again, this, uh, the collection, really made me see just how much I suck at platforming. Like, one thing I learned with, like, you know, 90s platforms is that if you choke, you're going to die. So you have to be 100% confident you're going to make all these jumps. And, yep, just like that, once you break all the boxes, you get the gem, and voila. But that's what I was saying before. So, uh, if, if you choke, you're going to die, which I choke a lot during this game. So if I die a lot during this, let's play... You guys know the reason why, and I, I hate myself for it because, I, I mean, I want to be confident with my platform, but I'm just, I just think that if I make the jump at a wrong time, I'm just going to miss that platform by just like an inch. I'm going to fall off, so I, I always like to make sure my jumps are good, and, and, and as a result, I end up dying. It's not fun. And now we got Jungle Rollers. I should also mention that in this game, there will be some stages where you can't get every box right off the bat. You do have to come back later. And I'll explain why, like, much later on once we get up to that part, because, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be a while. Anyways, also, I, shall, I, I, I keep going off with different tangents, because there's a lot I have to talk about with this game. So, like I said before, the original Crash Bandicoot was developed by Naughty Dog, the same guys that made Jack and Daxter, and the Charter series, and Last of Us. I should also mention Last of Us 2. The remake is not made by Naughty Dog, and for a lot of people, that could either be a turnoff. For a lot of people like me, I don't really care, because to, uh, the guys that did make this game by Carrie's Visions, which are also the same guys that did make, um... I, they, I know they made Twin Sanity. Or wait, was it Twin Sanity? Oh, they made they made a Crash Bandicoot game. I think it, it might have either been Twin Sanity or it might have been um, Wrath of Cortex. Which, you know, Wrath of Cortex, I... Like I said, I have played. I've never been before. And I don't really know... I don't really remember a lot about that game off of memory because I haven't played it in, like, years. But from what I remember, the game isn't bad. It's just a lot of criticism I, get, I hear from that game is, like, you know, it's very unoriginal. But anyways, so they did make a Crash Bandicoot game. It might have been... Around the Cortex, it might have been Twin Sanity. I'll look that up, you know, when I have my free time. But they're the ones that handled the remake. It was not Naughty Dog. And, I mean, I can see why people will be upset that Naughty Dog did not handle the remake. Because, I mean, they're the ones that kind of started Crash Bandicoot. So, it's right that they have to finish it. But, I mean, Vicarious Visions, for what they did with the series, for what they did for this remake, I, honest to God, they, they really knocked it out of the park. I could... Just give I could I could give Vicarious Visions a ton of praise just for what they did. Also, these are bonus levels. So if you saw throughout the stage, I was collecting faces of a girl, that girl Bandicoot that we saw in the introduction. So that this is Tana. She is Crash's girlfriend in this game. She never returns in another game, so don't remember her name. Anyways, so when you collect three of her faces, you go to a bonus room. Bonus rooms contain boxes and extra lives. So I really recommend you uh, you search for Tana. It, it gives you a lot of extra lives, and God knows you need a lot of extra lives in the platformer. So yeah. Um. Uh, besides that. Uh, there's also Cortex, which is the evil scientist you saw um, in the beginning of the game. You have his heads, and you also have Embryo's heads, which is that evil scientist you saw in the, well, the other evil scientist, the mad scientist. Well, actually, no, both of them are like mad scientists. Well, the uh, Cortex is the guy with the giant N on his forehead. I think, wait, does Embryo have a giant head on his forehead? I, I kind of forgot. Damn it. Okay, I have no idea where I'm going this. Anyways, so we got two stages done. Time to go on for more. Also, let me say that this game isn't really that long. I guess you could say that. I mean, the game, it's, it has its length, don't get me wrong, especially if you go for all the uh, the box gems, and holy shit, you're going to be playing this game for hours. But if you just go through the main story, like stage to stage, don't really care, you could probably beat this game in like an hour, hour and a half, two hours. It, it really isn't that long. But since I'm going, for, uh, since I'm going, since I'm going to be going for all the box gems, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a while. Oh my gosh. I'm honestly ready to rage for these box gems because, you know, even though I'm doing good right now, it's it doesn't really get bad for here for me because like I said before, platformers I could either be really good at them or I could suck horribly at them. And so far I'm surprised I'm actually, you know, reasoning through all these stages relatively quickly. Oh right, there we go. I wanted that life. Okay, come on. That's right, I just gotta spin on these things. And also let me just say that Crash Bandicoot for a game that came out like a long time ago even even in the ps1 the game still looks really nice like Naida did a really good job with designing these levels and vicarious vision just did an even better job just uh remastering all those levels for ps4 it looks really nice and holy crap i keep getting all these invisibility things which is good because i just breeze through the levels but at the same time it's like i also want like i, I want to show you guys a challenge 
Well, that means I'm just breezing through everything. This should be... What the... Okay, that was a little weird. This should be relatively fast. Come on. Do, 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 do. Out of the way. No. Oh, you got to be kidding me, you suck. It just had to end right there when I was making that jump. Okay, I mean, on the bright side, now I can actually show you guys actual gameplay rather than just me breezing through the entire stage. But okay, that just took a dump all over my fun. Okay. All right, now the bonus levels are starting to get a little more... Actually, no, they're not even challenging when we're talking about. Also, let me just say one thing this game fixed, which I am so happy to an extent because they do sort of keep it back, is that in this game, so say for example, if you see back there, I hit a TNT box. Pretty much a TNT box is if you hit it, that means there'll be a countdown, a timer for three, two, one, and then it explodes because it's TNT. So anyways, so in the, the PS1 version of Crash Bandicoot, if you were not on screen when the TNT box blew up, the game would treat, treat the TNT box as if it doesn't exist. And as a result, it would not count for box completion. In this game, thank God they fixed it. Because if, if you as long as you hit that TNT box, the game will still treat that box like it's there. And it will explode even if it's off screen. And you'll, it'll still count towards box completion. Which is good. Also, another thing the game did change from the PS1 original is that... Say, for example, you're, I, I don't know if this is in the PS1. I don't Correct me if I'm wrong because I have not played the PS1 games in a long time. Hell, I don't think I even beat one of the PS1 games. Anyways, so in the PS1 games, when you're collecting all the um, the boxes for the gem, if you died, you had to restart the entire level all over again to collect all the boxes that you broke because the game will reset the box count every time you die. I don't know if that's true. I have to check up on my facts because I, I, I believe that's true. At the same time, I'm not really sure, so I might have to check that out. But if it is true, and the PS1 game did treat that, they do sort of keep that back for all you... Crash Purist Elias or whatever you call it. Because for the color gems, which I'll be getting to later, you do have to beat the stage without dying. Which I know for a fact that in, the, in PS1, that was one of the stipulations for the color gems. You, have, you do have to beat the, the, the stage without dying. Which I'll talk about the color gems later because right now we still haven't found them yet. I should tell you, we, did, we do see that they're hinted at, but at the same time, we really don't. By the way, yeah, this is obvious Indiana Jones ripoff. I can see where Naughty Dog got the inspiration for Uncharted now. Crap, run, run, run. Eep. Ah, crap, yeah, right here always gets me because I, whenever I'm platforming in a game and I can't see where I'm landing, I always get really, like, anxious. I'm like, oh, no, am I not going to make this jump? Am I not going to make this jump? But, I mean, so far, I'm making all the jumps, so hooray. Oy, oy, oy. Crap, 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 and we got the box gem. Woo! Oh my gosh, okay, I'm actually doing a lot better than I expected. I'm genuinely surprised. Oh my gosh, okay. I'm doing better than I expected. I really expected me to be dying all the time, especially when I was talking, but... Okay. This is good, but you know, I probably just jinxed it because, yeah, this game, it, it could get really, really hard at times. Okay, so do, 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 do. Okay, what is this? Upstream. Okay, we are almost at the boss for this uh, for the, the 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 first boss, which is I believe Papu Papu. I think his name was. Yeah, I remember he comes back into insanity. That's fun. Ah, yeah, I'm not gonna lie though. Even though my nostalgic memories for Crash One don't really go back a, a long time, it does bring back some memories because yeah, I have played. The, I, like I said before, I have played the original PS One trilogy, and even though those games could be really ball busting hard at times, I still found those games really really fun. Especially Warped. I love Warped. That's like, the, that's like the one PS1 game I did put the most time into, and holy crap. Yeah, Warped is really, really fun. I cannot wait till I actually get to this game for the collection. But anyways, so I did put some time to the PS1 games. I haven't beaten any because, you know, like I said before, I could either really suck or I could be really good at these, um, uh, like, classic 90s isometric... This is an isometric, what am I talking about? Uh, classic 90s 3D platformers, and Crash Bandicoot was one of those games where I was kind of bad at. <laughs> I mean, so... What? Wait, whoa, 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 I was nowhere even near that TNT. Ah, dang it. Crap, I lost Aku. Well, that's unfortunate, but I mean, I feel genuinely... Oh, Aku's right there. But yeah, I feel genuinely confident that I could platform my way and hopefully make it to the end in one piece. And dang, I need, I need a stupid color gem for that. Like I said, I'll get more into the color gems later, but just for now, just for now, just remember that, uh... There have been like those platforms that are very transparent and we can't get to them yet, so I'll get to them later once I get those box gems. Not uh, uh, the color gems. Okay. 
Yeah, a trick for this is just literally just do that because there are some people that will break the first column and then move on to the next one, and then they're pretty much boned. But just do this simple trick and you should be good. There we go. And voila. Wow, holy crap. I'm actually doing very good. You know, maybe, maybe the reason why I'm doing good is because literally, like, five minutes before I started recording, I just beat the first game in this collection. I literally just beat Crash 1 on the PS4 collection. So maybe that's the reason why I'm doing so good, because, like, you know, since I beat the final boss, like, my skills from the rest of this game are kind of, like, rubbing off right now. Because, yeah, if you want to 100% this game, you have to get good. That's literally just the best way I could put it. Getting good is the, is the only way you'll get actually all the collectibles. Because holy crap, this game will literally test all your platforming skills at... Oh, yeah, yeah, crap. It, they, they really... Playing, replaying this game really does make me show just how much I haven't played a single platformer. Honestly, though, you, you guys can't really even blame me because they, they haven't made a, a good 3D platformer for any game series in like the longest time. I think the last 3D platformer they made was like Ukulele and even then I didn't even bother finishing that game because I, I got really bored. And also, they, they kind of made the mistake of releasing that game during Persona 5. And Persona 5 is... Oh, that was just God tier. But yeah, anyways. Now we got the first boss, Pabu Pabu. So the feet, Pabu Pabu. Okay, I think I fixed it, but I'm not really sure. I really hope that I did not lose all my recording because I'm going to cry a lot because I actually really do genuinely like this recording. So I hope everything should be good. If not, then, oh no. I, I blame the stupid background software, but I mean, if anything, I could probably salvage what I already have. Let me just see if it still recorded everything. That's the thing. So I'm at like 1720. Yeah, okay, according to this, I think I still got everything. It's just I might have to do a little bit of editing magic there. And hopefully everything should be good. Anyways, though, we beat Pabu Pabu. Hooray! Yeah, yeah, that was not even a challenge. To be honest, I really forgot that I even, I even beat him. What was this? It's right, Coco's Time Machine. So, yeah, in this game, you could play as Coco, I think. I have yet to play as Coco, so I don't really know how she plays. This is Crash's sister. She doesn't get introduced until 2, but since it's a collection, she's in 1. So, yeah, whatever. And now we got Rolling Stones, the obvious musical reference. By the way, most of the stages in this game are either puns or music or like references to other stuff. I love the puns and references. They're, they're just, they're fun. Okay, let me just adjust my mic. All right, there we go. Should be better now. Wait, no, wait. Right there, there we go. All right, come on, there we go. All right, let's beat this stage really quickly. Yeah, I'm surprised I'm actually getting through most of this stuff relatively quick. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm genuinely surprised because usually, I remember my first playthrough, I was doing, it was, it was, I mean, I wasn't taking forever on these stages, but I was going, like, at a very steady pace. And there we go, that's the Embryo collect, um, a bonus room. Yeah, like I said before, there's an Embryo bonus room. Embryo's bonus rooms are generally more harder than, than Tana's. Like, the difficulty goes Tana, Embryo, and then Cortex. Cortex's rooms, oh my gosh, Cortex's rooms could be very, very challenging. I messed up. I hate my life so much. Oh my gosh. Okay, wait. I I had to I had to kill myself. Yeah, I I hate my life so much. There was yeah, right there. There's an embryo. It's just I kind of blew up. I I kind of blew up everything, so I wasn't able to get it. Wait, it wasn't that. There it was. 